So some problems are not standard. Now there's definitely a lot of problems that are not standard according to what uh, we've discussed in this class so far is something standard. But even for uh, our text, standard means some different things. Notice this is a maximization problem. So let's see how it compares. The objective function is to be maximized, check. Variables involved in the problem are non-negative, check. Each linear constraint is written so that the expression involves is less than or equal to a non-negative constant. Well, less than or equal to non-negative constant, check. Not so much. So it's right here, and this is the second equation of the, the constraints that we've got issues. All right, so here's what we do. To solve a non-standard problem, if this had been a minimization problem, we would rewrite it to be a maximization problem. Second step, we rewrite all the constraints to be less than or equal to inequalities. One of my constraints is just fine. This one right here, no worries. The second one that I need to mess with, so let's mess with them. Equals means two things. And when we're solving this and we're redoing it so that it's less than or equal to, if this had been an inequality that maybe was just pointing in the wrong direction, you'd multiply both sides by negative one. But this is an equality. And so that means two things are true. One, minus x plus three y is less than or equal to three, but also minus x plus three y is bigger than or equal to three. If both of these are true, less than or equal to, bigger than or equal to, together they mean equals three. Remember, I need to get it so that all the inequalities are pointing to the left. So this bottom one here isn't pointing the right way. Multiply both sides of my equation by negative 1. This gives me x minus 3y is less than or equal to negative 3. All right. So now I've got my thing. I'm maximizing my p equation, x plus 2y. And now it's subject to these guys. 2x plus 3y is less than or equal to 12. Minus x plus 3y is less than or equal to 3. x minus 3y is less than or equal to negative 3. So now let's set up our simplex tableau. I've got x, I've got y, I have three equations here, so I'm going to have u, v, and w, and of course p, and then my constants. Remember p I'm going to solve over, so I'm going to have minus x minus 2y plus p equals 0. So what am I going to get here? 2, 3, 1, 0, 0, 0, 12, minus 1. 3, 0, 1, 0, 0, 3, and 1, minus 3, 0, 0, 1, 0, negative 3. And then my objective function here on the bottom being minus 1, minus 2, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. All right. Now here's our two new steps. One of our new steps is we had to fiddle around with this. Are the ones here? Look in the column of constants. That's the spot right here. If there are no negative entries, move on to the simplex method as usual. If there are negative entries, which there are, I've got this negative 3, then here's what we do. We pick any of the negative entries. Here I only happen to have one. It's this one. And, and then picking that negative entry, I go to the left. I look at all of these and I find one of the negative entries in that row. Here I only have one option, this one. That tells me that this column right here, the column that this negative 3 that I'm highlighting ever larger is in, is the column that I'm going to pivot in. So let me go through that again. Notice as we're looking at this, we've got some things happening here. Normally, if I was doing simplex method as normal, I would pick this column to pivot about because negative 2 is the most negative number that I've got down in this spot. 
but we're dealing with a non-standard situation. We know we're non-standard because I've got a negative 3 over here on the right. Because of that, I check in the row that this negative 3 is in, and I pick one of the negative numbers in that row. When I'm picking one of the negative numbers in the row that my, my, my number over here is, there's only one option, this negative 3. Once I've chosen this column for a very different reason than I would choose it if I was doing simplex as standard, and that's big because this is just a coincidence. In real life, you're not going to get lucky. You could have accidentally picked this column for all the wrong reasons. Make sure you pick it for the right ones. Now that i picked the row I'm going to be pivoting in, here's what we do. We're going to calculate the positive ratios of the numbers. Notice what happens. I get 12 over 3, I get 3 over 3, I get negative 3 over negative 3. This is 4, 1, or 1. Pivot row is going to correspond to the smallest ratio. Notice I've got two options for what smallest ratio means. So I can pick my favorite. I'll go with this one. All right, so I'm going to do one third times row two. That's going to give me x, y, u, v, w, capital P, constants. Two, three, one, zero, 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 twelve. Negative one third, one, zero, one third, zero, zero, one, and then one, negative three, zero, zero, one, zero, negative three, and finally my objective line being negative one, negative two, zero, 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 one, zero. Okay, now it's time to continue pivoting around this element. I need to do row one minus three, row two. I need to do row 3 plus 3 row 2, and I need to do row 4 plus 2 row 2. Get all my pivoting done. X, Y, U, V, W, P, constants. This middle row is not going to change. Negative 1 third, 1, 0, 1 third, 0, 0, 1. All right, let's start out here. Row one minus three, row two gives me two. Minus, minus gives me plus. Three over three is one, so that leaves me with three. Three minus three gives me zero. One minus three times zero leaves me with one. Zero minus three over three is zero, and that is a negative one. Zero, zero, 12 minus three leaves me with 9. Row 3 plus 3, row 2. Dealing with down here. 1 minus 3, that gives me a 0. Negative 3 plus 3 gives me a 0. 0 and 0. 0 plus 1. 1, 0. Negative 3 plus 3 also leaves me with zero. And finally row four plus two row two. Negative one minus two thirds. Negative one over one minus two over three. Negative three over three, three, four, five, negative five thirds. And I'm gonna have one times two plus negative is two, that's gonna give me the zero, zero and zero, zero plus two thirds, zero and zero, one, zero and two. All right, we're doing non-standard, that means we first check over here, all of these are positives though, so that means we switch, if there are no negative entries, use simplex method as normal which is what we're after now. So I look down here, this guy's negative, so I select this row. All right, so I have nine divided by three, which gives me three. 
I have 1 divided by negative 1 third, which would give me negative 3. Uh, 0 is not something we're going to count because I would have 0 divided by 0. And this is undefined. So it's definitely not going to be this one. And we're picking positive numbers. This right here, this, this 3, is going to be the one that I'm going to go with. So I'm going to take 1 third times row 1. I can imagine a less cohesive explanation for my line of my 3 over here, um, but it's hard to. Uh, 0 divided by 0 is undoubtedly undefined. We're picking a positive uh, division ratios, and that means that I'm going with this one. Okay. So this is my pivot element, and let's copy it out. X, Y, U, V, W, P, and constants. And everybody else is going to stay the same for this first iteration. So I have 1 third, 1, 0, 1 third, 0, 0, and 1. So I've got 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. And then I've got negative 5 thirds, 0, 0, 2 thirds, 1, 0, 1, 2. And then my uh, top row now is going to change by multiplying through by 1 third. So I'm going to get 1, 0, 1 third, negative 1 third, 0, 0. And 9 divided by 3 is, in fact, 3. And I'm pivoting around this element right here. So I need to do row 2 plus 1 third, row 1. And I need to do row 4 plus 5 thirds, row 1. And this row already is just fine as it is. So I've got x, y, u, v, w, and p, and my constants. And my top row, 1, 0, 1 third, negative 1 third, 0, 0, 3. All right, let's do this addition here. I've got row two, which is negative one third, plus one third there, that gets me zero. Oh, and my bottom row is also staying the same, so let me copy that out real fast or something messes with that. And I've got row two plus one third row one, but that's zero, so that just leaves me with one. Zero plus one third times one third leaves me with one ninth. One third minus one ninth. Notice here, I'm not even uh, necessarily going to bother to do fraction addition. Um, this is called simplification. I know from this spot right here and the fact that I'm about to kill off my last negative here, I'm about to be done um, with my equation solving. And since this is a 1 here, that's going to be my x. Since this is a 1 here, this is going to be my y value. So mainly I think I can kind of skip through this. I don't really have to solve all these out. And I can look here and say, well, I'm going to get 1 plus uh, 1 third times 3, which is going to give me 2. And then for my row 4, again, when I'm adding row 1 to it, these guys are positive, so it's going to keep positive here. This guy's going to go to zero because that's the point of this equation that I cooked up right here. Positives and positives, again, positive and positive. The only worry is right here, this guy with this one. And if I do two thirds plus five thirds times negative one third, that's going to be minus one over three. So it's two over three minus five over nine. That's 6 over 9, which is 1 9, and that's positive. The point being, this bottom part right here is now going all positive on me. So I really only care about this last answer here, which is my uh, answer to my P equation. So I'm going to get 2 plus 5 thirds times 3, which cancels, and that leaves me with the 7 right here. So x equals 3, y equals 2, and p equals 7. 
Notice how I was able to sort of work smarter, not harder, and ignore several areas that I didn't actually have to calculate out all of the equations. So this can help me speed through an equation, and this is how you actually calculate stuff. Don't mindlessly calculate. Be intelligent about the whole issue. This is my x. This is my y. This is my p. It's looking very much like a 2. The real answer that I'm going for is 7. So I have a coordinate pair 3, 2 for my optimal point, and I've got p equals 7.